friends. This is a great treat for me. I can get together, see people, study Torah. Pretty much all I want to do is see people and study Torah. So I appreciate that. So this is really our, our um, <clears throat> second class in the series about the Kabbalah of Passover. Um, the format is we try to offer short segments of short, short meditations. So if you missed the last one, that's okay because sort of each nugget or each meditation is really self-standing. But one thing we have to just um, reiterate what we said in the past, and we say it every year, that the Passover experience is not, was not designed to be a commemoration. Commemorations are nice, but that's not the Passover experience. The Passover experience is to actually relive that same experience of freedom of the Exodus. It's actually in the liturgy of the Haggadah, which we say in Passover night, quoted from the Mishnah, which says that every person has to see themselves as if they themselves left Egypt. So what does it mean that I myself left Egypt? I confess I was never in Egypt. Um, I was in Eilat, but not in Egypt. Um, so the, as we spoke in the past many times, most people know this, the, Kab the, the Kabbalistic interpretation is that Egypt represents limitation. The Hebrew word for Egypt is Mitzrayim, which means straits and limitation. And exodus from Egypt is a person's ability to go beyond their own limitation and grow beyond their own comfort zone. And that's the essence of freedom. And that's what we do every day in a sense, but even more so every year at the Passover night. When we eat the matzah, we internalize the energy and the capacity for freedom, freedom, both physical freedom, but also spiritual freedom, the ability to, <clears throat> to grow and expand. So that is something that applies to everything we're going to say. Everything we're going to say is not about the past. It's about the present and the future. So that's introduction number one. <clears throat> Then we'll go straight to the, to, to, um, we'll jump right in. So there's a very important, one of the biblical commandments of the night of Passover. Some of the commandments, that, some of the customs we do are biblical commandments, such as eating matzah. Some of the things we do are rabbinic commandments, such as drinking the four cups of wine. And then there are certain things that we do that are just custom, you know, like dipping the onion in salt water, et cetera. So we have all various categories of customs and practices that we do. One of the biblical commandments, which makes it sort of the most important, one of the biblical commandments of the night is literally to tell the story. That's the, the, the Hebrew word is Haggadah, saying the story. In the Torah, it's Behigadet Talavinchas, tell it to your child. And this year, some people are not going to have uh, their children with them at the Seder. So the Code of Law says, quoting the Talmud, that if a person is alone, well, sorry, if the person has a child, the child asks the person the question, and then you respond and, tell, and speak to your child. If you don't have a child, you have a friend, the friend asks you the question. If you have a spouse, your spouse asks you the question. If you're alone, you have to ask yourself the question, and you have to answer yourself the question. Even though you know the answer, you know the questions, you know the answer. So why do you have to verbalize it? So we see clearly that the concept of verbalization of speech is critical to the mitzvah of the, 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 the uh, celebrating the concept of Passover. And like I said, it's a biblical commandment to retell the story. So let's think about this concept of speech and how it relates to Kabbalah and how it relates to freedom. So the Kabbalists explain, specifically the Arizal, he explains something very interesting. He, def he defines the person, the difference between a, a person in bondage, a slave, and a free person as some, somebody, a free person is someone who has the ability to speak. And we'll explain what that means. Well, let's first, let's first trace this idea within the verses. So if you read this, the, story of, the story of the Exodus begins in the book of the Exodus, and the first portion is the portion of the slavery. And the slavery, it's almost like it's a very sad part of the Torah. And the first portion concludes, and 
you don't really see any light at the end of the tunnel because what you see is that God tells Moshe that he'll take the Jews out of Egypt. Moshe, the people believe. Moshe goes to the Pharaoh, but Moshe is unsuccessful. Not only does Pharaoh not allow the people to go, but Pharaoh, in, in fact, intensifies the slavery. So you're reading that portion. You feel like you're in bondage. You feel like there's only darkness surrounding you. Now, if you look at that portion carefully, says the Arizal, you will see that the Jewish people don't speak. Even when they cry to Hashem, when they cry out to God, it says as follows. It says, Vaye Anhu. Vaye Anhu means that they, um, in Yiddish, they say, a person um, moans or, 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 just, or just makes a sound, but he cannot articulate what's bothering them. So it says, Vayizaku, they scream to God, but a scream, a scream is just a shout, like a child shouting. But they didn't articulate what's the problem and what do they, and what they want. And Arizal says that putting your finger on those verses, you he says that is the essence of slavery, the inability to speak. And then he says, if you follow a portion or two later, when we get much closer to the redemption, sort of talking about where well, I think it's at plague number eight. Over there, God tells Moshe, you know why I'm taking you out of Egypt? You know why I'm bringing the plagues? He says something very interesting, Uleman tisaper, in order that you tell the story. It's almost like it says the entire purpose of the Exodus is to give you the ability to tell a story. And the Arizal says that telling a story is the function of a free people. That is the definition of a free person, someone who can tell a story. And we'll explain, but just to put that, just, just to put out the, the pieces of the puzzle before we put it all together. Now, the word Pesach, what does Passover mean? So everybody knows the, 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 the simple, not the simple, the straightforward interpretation that the Torah says. The Torah says that um, on the night of the Exodus, God told everybody to go inside their homes, to be quarantined, sit with your family and friends, and make a, offer a Pesach a lamb, eat the meat, get ready to move. We're not going to move to the next day, but get ready, be prepared to move. And then God says, nobody should leave their home. Why shouldn't we leave the home? Because this is the night of the plague of the firstborn. On this night, all firstborn Egyptians will die. The Jewish people, the Jewish firstborns will be spared. And the Jewish, uh, the Jewish firstborn will be able to uh, remain at, uh, will, will, be, will be spared if they stay at home. And God says, you know, you put the blood on the doorposts. So that will be a sign that it's a Jewish home, and God will pass over the homes of the Jews. That's why we name we call it we call the word the holiday Passover. Pesach is to jump, to leap, to pass over. Wonderful. Um, when we were when we were in the eighties, there was the Chabad the Chabad uh, youth organization used to buy buy advertising on the on the on the. Um, on the New York City subways, and they would put up various uh, advertising for the different holidays. And the one I remember best as a child was they wrote, don't pass over Passover. That was the line, don't, don't pass over Passover. So in any case, everybody knows that Passover, Passover means God passes over the home, the Jewish homes, and therefore, and, and, and that's how he saves, and the Jewish firstborn are spared. That's what the Torah says. In addition to that interpretation is the Kabbalistic interpretation. And Arizal says that the word Pesach can be divided into two words. Pesach as in Pesach. Pe is mouth and Sach is to speak. Okay, so what's the essence of the holiday? The essence of the holiday is the ability to speak. So again, to summarize, we have a few points here. Slavery is when the Jewish people cannot speak. They cannot articulate what, what they want and what the problem is and what the solution is. And freedom, God says, when you will experience all 10 plagues and when, when the exodus will happen, the man tisaper, you'll be able to tell the story to you, ch your children. Telling a story is how you become free. And that's the name of the holiday from the Kabbalistic perspective is the concept of um, Pesach, speech. A, a speaking mouth is the definition of freedom. What does this mean? So first I'm gonna give you the Kabbalistic interpretation and then I'm gonna to try to make it a little bit more relevant with a more practical um, interpretation. But the Kabbalistic interpretation is as follows. When you look at the, when you look at the creation of the, of the world 
The, the Torah describes in the book of Genesis how God creates the world with 10 utterances. God speaks and the world comes into being. What is speech? Speech is revelation. I have a, an idea in my head, but you have no way of knowing what it is until I speak it, until I articulate it. Right? I have a thought, maybe I love you. Unless I express it, unless I speak it, you do, you're not gonna, it's going to be concealed within myself. It's not going to be revealed in the universe. So the Arizal says that when you, if you're in a state of exile, so the positivity in the world, the godliness in the world, the holiness in the world is not being spoken. When you say it's not being spoken, you mean it's not being communicated. It's not revealed. It's there, but it's not revealed. And revelation is, if you could speak, if you could, revelation is, if you could, if, if you could, revelation is if you could see the positivity, the energy, the holiness in the world, that's because God is speaking. That's because God is revealing his energy. So that's from the Kabbalistic perspective. Um, Neil wants to know how does Pesach mean speech? That's a technical Hebrew thing. So for example, the word Sicha, a talk, that's related to Sach, Sicha, talk. So there are multiple words for speech in Hebrew. One of them is, is Sicha. So it's, it's actually, yeah. So that's, that's how you get the connection. Okay, so that's the more Kabbalistic and, and, and mystical concept, which is that um, revelation is speech. When God speaks, it means God's presence is revealed. Um, if you don't see the speech, speech being concealed represents that the holiness in the world, the positivity in the world is concealed. So that is sort of the mystical interpretation. Now we're trying to make it a little bit more practical. So what, is, <clears throat> what does bondage mean? What does slavery mean in the, in the personal sense? So slavery means I'm being suppressed. There's something within myself that exists. You see, a person is in prison. A person is in prison. A person is healthy. The person is, has all his limbs in, are, are functioning. A person could, 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 has all the strength and all the potential. The problem is he's not able to express it. I can't go where I want to go. I can't express my, um, my, my talents, etc. So spiritually, it's the same thing. If I say I'm in spiritual um, ex um, exile or spiritual bondage or, sp or spiritual um, slavery, what that means is that there are certain potentials within my soul, but they're being suppressed and not being expressed. And to free myself, I have to express it. And I'm going to give two practical ramifications. Hopefully this will help people think about this in a new way. So I have a certain feeling to a spouse, to a child, to a person. If I'm not able, if I don't speak it, if I don't take the time to articulate how I feel about you, if I don't take the time to show you how appreciative I am by speaking, by saying thank you, by saying I love you, then I have all this emotion within me, but that emotion is suppressed. That emotion is enslaved. And the idea of speech is the ability to express that. So when I speak, I'm actually freeing the energy and the emotion which is within me. If I don't speak, if I don't tell my child I love them, if I don't tell my spouse I love you, what's happening is that energy still exists, but the energy is enslaved. By speaking it, I express it. By expressing it, I free it. That's one angle. Then there's another angle. Another angle is, that if you look at um, reality, reality does certain things to you. There are certain objective, objective facts that happen in the world around you. A person who's not able to speak is just reacting to what the universe is sending their way. A person who's able to speak, and more importantly, tell a story, right? The Torah says, Laman tisaper, tell a story. What does a story mean? A story means that there are many random, seemingly random events and you're able to string them together and create some meaning. That's the, that's the concept of telling a story. And in this sense, what's happening here is, let's say I'm reacting to what's happening around me, I'm enslaved. If I spin it around and I say, I'm gonna tell a story, I'm gonna define these facts, I'm gonna explain these facts and put them into context, then if I'm putting it into context, then I am in control and I am free. I'm not reacting to the, I'm not being affected by the universe, but I am actually the one who is the author of what's happening to me. So for example, let's say I'm living in the era of Corona and I've been quarantined. So one attitude is 
They told me to go indoors, I'm indoors. I'm sitting here for a few months, a few months of my life will be wasted. When they tell me to leave, I'll leave. Okay, I'm a good, I'm a good citizen. I do exactly what the people, what, what the government tells me or what the health professionals tell me. I am reacting. That's very good, you're safe, you're saving lives, it's a wonderful thing, stay home, it's a wonderful thing, but I am now sort of enslaved to my environment. Well, what happens if I think in terms of a story? So I ask myself, what's gonna be the story here? What am I gonna tell my children, my grandchildren? What am I gonna tell my diary? How am I going to define this period? Ah, I could, then once I start thinking in terms of story, I'm gonna say something about the scenario. I'm gonna articulate what this means for me, now, all of a sudden, I could say, okay, in these, this time of quarantine, I have a certain project that I want to fulfill. It could be a physical thing. I have to move the furniture around. It could mean working on myself. It could mean working on my relationships. Whatever it is, as long as I am telling the story, then I am impacting how I, how I am going to develop under, these, under this scenario. If I do so, then I am in control. If I'm not telling the story, I'm being affected by the story. So the concept of freedom, in some sense, is speech, telling a story, which means I am not being defined by the circumstances. If I tell a story, then I am, I am defining the circumstances. I am telling you what these circumstances are, are what they mean to me, and how they're going to affect me. But I'm the author of my own story. And that's why freedom is connected with speech. If I can talk, if I can tell a story, if I can articulate what the meaning of this, of, of, of what's happening to me is, then I am in control. If I'm in control, I am free. So that's the first meditation, just to summarize, and then we'll open it up if anybody wants to ask a question. Um, the first meditation is the ability to speak is the ability to be free. If you want to be free, articulate to the people around you what you feel. Tell them what you feel. Tell them if you appreciate them. Tell them how much they mean to you. That is the concept of freedom in one sense. Another sense is never be defined by the circumstances. You tell the story, right? Any author would know that the circumstances is only one part of the story. You have to paint the picture. You have to give a scenario. But what's really happening is character development. What's really happening is how people are reacting to those scenarios, or people, how are people taking advantage or um, using this scenario to develop themselves. And that's why to be free is to tell a story. So thank you for listening. We're gonna open up the floor if anybody wants to share, and then we'll, we'll, we will continue on our journey toward the Kabbalah of Passover. Okay. The floor is open. If anybody wants to share, we'll try this. Noisy here. Okay, I'm going to put it back on silent and we'll continue just because this is becoming a little more difficult. Thank you, Rob.